Welcome to Andy's Garage. I'm Andy Phillips. Today we're going to talk about grounding your alternator. We're going to talk about how to make sure you have a good ground, what happens if you don't have a good ground, and then some different options on how to ground it. Let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm going to have some links down in the description. If you've been following my channel at all, you've been aware of the issues that we had with this other vehicle over here, a Kia Rio. Uh, some alternator issues there. We had a bad alternator. We had to test it. We had to test the voltage, um, the um, voltage drop on that. We also had to check to make sure we had a good ground. And I showed all of that. There's different videos pertaining to all that that we're not going to go in depth in this video. But I'll have the links down in the description if you want to check those out. But let's get a close up here. For the most part, your alternators are grounded onto the engine block. Now that's only going to be a successful ground if the engine itself is grounded properly with good ground. In those cases, you would need to test that and that will be down in one of the videos down in the description. But let's take a look and I'll show you for the most part how most of them are grounded. This right here is an old Jeep Wrangler TJ, but you can see here's your alternator and it grounds right here onto the engine block. So that connection there, you need to make sure is nice and clean or that's connected. On this vehicle, which is the Kia Rio that we've been working on, if you see all the way down there, there's your ground. You have a, a through bolt that goes through and kind of sandwiches on like that on the engine block as well. Here's another vehicle. This right here is a 5.3 liter General Motors V8. It's in a Chevy Trailblazer, but this is our alternator. And you can see right there, the alternator slides in between right there and that's where it's grounded here and then you can see also on this side the ground now it's important that you have a good ground on there some of the indications that your vehicle might be exhibiting if you don't have a good ground is you may have some stalling out you might have when you're trying to start it a slow start or even a no start in the case of this vehicle here when we had the grounding issue and when we tested the ohms it was all over the place but the issue that i had is i was driving the vehicle the battery light came on which is usually an indication that your alternator is not working anymore and it's running off your off your battery because there's an issue with the charging system and when i pulled over got it off the road and luckily i had enough power to do that get through the intersection and and pull over then when I tested it, I saw that the battery had completely been drained. And when I tested the alternator, that's when it was determined that the ground was bad. We got that fixed. That solved our problem. Another issue is um, you may have the dimming lights, radio dimming down, and just different electrical issues that could be exhibiting. Sometimes that can mean that your alternator needs to be replaced, could mean that your battery needs to be replaced. So it's important to diagnose it properly. But sometimes it could be if you test your, your batteries is fine, meaning that if the alternator isn't grounded properly, it's not gonna recharge the battery, the battery died. But if the battery is in good shape, you should be able to recharge it. So if you're able to recharge it, the battery may not be bad. And if you know that the alternator tests out fine as well, then you need to take a look at that ground and you need to make sure that, that, that you have a stable and secure ground on that. But let's take a look now. I'm gonna show you what I had to do with this vehicle in order to clean it properly because, and let's get a close up and I'll show you what I'm talking about here with this alternator. If we take a look at this alternator here, which is a new one, it has this powder coating on it. Sometimes that can hinder the, the connection with the ground. So it's a good idea to clean that off where it's making the contact with the engine block and make sure that the engine block is also clean. Let's take a look. And it's real good. This side. I might have to use some sandpaper on this side. Can't get that in. Also down here in the middle. So we get some sandpaper. You want to clean it very good. You want a nice clean metal to metal connection. On the alternator as well. Look at that. Going through where the through bolt goes. Nice and clean and shiny. Look, you can see the comparison there. How dirty it was to how clean it is now on that side. And let me see if I can get a shot on this other side for you to see it. But you can see that as well. You can see where I scraped all that coating off. That way it's the bare metal. 
we'll flip this over. I'll show you what we did on this side too. So you can see it. All nice and clear, so that way it bonds to the, uh, the mount nice and clean. Also cleaned this bolt real good. It had junk on there. That way we have nice metal, metal coming here, mounting onto that nice and clean metal as well. With the alternator installed, you can see we have a nice, clean, secure connection. The alternator there onto the engine block, everything is nice and tight. You also want to make sure that the engine itself is grounded properly. Usually that'll be grounded onto the body or onto the frame. So you want to look for that, that stable ground. It's usually one of these thick kind of um, grounding cables that, that it's connected to. But you want to test that as well. Make sure there's no breaks in that. Make sure that's all connected as well. Now, some people will recommend putting a second ground on the alternator. On the casing itself, on some alternators, you'll have a, a grounding bolt on there where you can add an additional ground to that. You can either ground it to the starter ground. You can also ground it onto the negative of your battery, different things like that. I'll leave that up to you if that's something you want to do. There's mixed feedback on that. Uh, some people recommend adding that second one in case you do have a bad ground like we talked about with my vehicle where it wasn't stable and the alternator failed. That would have kicked in and, and would have prevented that. However, some people disagree with that because you shouldn't have more than one stable ground off the alternator. So I'll let you make that decision. But if you are going to do that, you want to make sure that you ground it properly. What I have here, this is a four gauge wire. You definitely want a very thick gauged in order to, uh, to do that. You can pick these up at auto parts stores, things like that. But you want to make sure that if you are going to do it, that you use the right cables and that you ground it to the right spots on there. I'm going to have listed on the screen some good grounds where you could do an alternate ground on your alternator. On this alternator, you can see right here, that's where you could attach this ground right here. If you added another bolt, you could run it right through there onto the casing. Others also connect it right here you, um, as you're running that, that through bolt through where you're grounding this alternator here onto the engine block right there. You can run this through there as well to get a nice secure connection as well. Okay, well that wraps up this video on grounding the alternator. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of comments from different people because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of different uh, views on that as far as what to do, what not to do, things like that. As mentioned already, some people say do not add that second ground wire on there. Other people say they recommend it. So I'm probably going to hear back from both of those. Um, and then just as far as the, the grounding of the alternator in general. But from my experience, if you've got a clean ground and you remove the powder coating and make sure it's a nice, stable, tight ground, you clean the engine block, test it to make sure that there's no, uh, there's no resistance. You get a, a nice, solid ground. Make sure that the engine is grounded properly. You should be good to go. If you see anything that's out of whack, you definitely want to fix that, get that cleaned up, as mentioned already in this video. Check out some of the videos down in the description where I go more in depth on how to get a stable ground off the engine, how to check your alternator, all that stuff. That'll help you out. But I hope that this video was informative for you, helped you out with maybe any issues that you're having with an alternator grounding issue. Please send me any questions and comments. I would love to hear from you. And as always, I appreciate all the support. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, as I'm constantly posting new content, and I'll see you next time.